something truly unladylike. Lie like that. Hi there, my name is James and this is Nell. And thank you so much for checking out my podcast, Dad Mind Matters. Helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Stop moving your head, you're out of frame. In this podcast episode, I'm going to be passing on some great knowledge from an entrepreneur who I'm mildly obsessed with at the moment and whose content I've been pretty much binge watching for the past month. I decided to set up this podcast because I generally want to support parents, specifically dads, and I suppose even more specifically, dads like myself who often struggle with their mental health. If that sounds like you're something you'd like to support, please follow my podcast or if you watch this on my YouTube channel, please hit subscribe. So all the information I'm passing on here from Alex Hormozzi's video may well be information and advice you've heard in different ways all over the place. But when it comes to hearing advice, sometimes I think you have to hear the same piece of advice over and over again until one moment the penny finally drops. I like the Zen saying, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I think like a lot of things in life, it's down to timing. When you're really in a space where you want to change, maybe because things have got so bad, maybe because your relationships are so bad or you're so miserable with your job, it's only when you have that level of desperation that you're actually ready to learn and ready to generally have the courage to try new things. So who is Alex Hormozzi? He's an American entrepreneur. He's the managing partner and founder of acquisition.com who are an American company that help other companies to scale their business. If and when one day I hopefully have a business that's at a point to be scaled, then I may drop him a line. Until that point, I'm just going to keep working hard. Alex has written a number of books, all of which look brilliant. And I think because I saw him referring to this book throughout the video, a lot of this information is included in his latest book. This book's entitled 100 Million Leads. It's a blue covered book with a massive magnet on the front. It looks awesome, maybe go and check it out. In this video, he talks about eight things that he's learnt that he would like, if he could, pass on to his younger self, which you can't, because no one has a time machine. I don't think Elon Musk may well have a number of time machines, but I don't know. And the first point he'd like to talk about is about hard work. And basically, like all of us who are often overwhelmed by the amount of work we know we need to do to get our dreams and projects off the ground, he'd like to pass on that there is no shortcut when it comes to hard work. The hard work just has to get done. He goes on to say that the one thing about hard work is when you do the hard work, you suddenly realize that what you used to think was hard work is not hard work at all. So he says that he used to sort of think that if he'd worked on something a day, he'd work really hard. He now tends to think of, instead of thinking I've worked on it a week or a month or a year, He thinks of things in hours. How many hours have I committed to this project? So how many hours have I committed to trying to establish and develop my podcast? Well, I've been working on it for a year, so it's got to be in the hundreds. If you can get your head around the idea that it's gonna be done a lot longer than you think, then you're probably on the right path. And this comes with age. So in the same way that my 11 year old daughter is now panicking about SATs, which she will overcome, and then she'll start worrying about GCSEs, which she will overcome, then she'll start worrying about A-levels, which she'll overcome, and if she goes to university, she'll start worrying about degrees. Basically, as you evolve and grow up, the things you worry about and you overcome, suddenly you realise, actually, they weren't a major problem. As long as you work hard, you continue to raise your game. You continue to realise you can do way more than you thought you could. And that's an exciting proposal, because once you know that, then there's nothing that can stop you from getting where you want to be. So for example, when I started working in the fitness industry in about 1998 and I started running and I hadn't run at all in any capacity since school, the idea of running a 5k was pretty daunting. But I trained and I worked hard and I ran a 5k. And once I was at that 5k I thought what else could I do? So then I ran and trained, I did a 10k and this evolved into a half marathon and a marathon. And today I think I've run about 18 marathons. I say run, plodded round is probably more of an accurate description. But I've done some pretty hectic marathons, some of which are more likely to be considered as ultras. If someone had told me just after I finished my 5k that one day I'd end up running multiple marathons, I probably wouldn't believe them. It just goes to show that you don't really know what you're capable of. You're capable of way more than you think. You've just got to do the work. There are no shortcuts. And actually the time and energy you spend looking for a shortcut is just prolonging the time you're going to get to your destination. Just get your head down and do the work and try and enjoy it if you can. Try and celebrate the fact that you're working hard. 
Alex goes on to say the secret of success is work ethic and time. For example, a dry cleaners that always delivers your dry cleaning on time and perfectly clean is a winning business. You don't need to do anything else. Because as he says, 99% of businesses will at some point let you down, will at some point drop the ball. If you think about all the companies that you use, for example, is there a takeaway that you always go back to? There's a Chinese takeaway that we use that always give us a complimentary bag of prawn crackers. The problem for them is that now they've started doing that, if they ever forget to give me a complimentary bag of prawn crackers, I might think to look somewhere else. But really good service is rewarded. As long as they maintain a really good service, I won't look elsewhere. He goes on to say, the longer you can delay the time when you need the reward for the work you're doing, the greater the reward. So for example, the longer the runway, the bigger the reward. No, the longer the runway, the bigger the plane. You don't get rewards at the end of runways, but you probably do get planes on runways. I'm gabbling now. Most people can't do the work or can't do the work it takes to create massive success because they need instant gratification. That's why TikTok is so successful. That's why social media is so successful. We create something, we post it, and the minute we get a handful of likes, we're satisfied. If you spent five years creating a product, building a community, engaging with that community, if and when you finally launch a product to that community, it'd be much more likely to be successful than if you just did a post and said, I'm selling this, do you wanna buy it? People buy from people. The people I buy things from are quite often people I quite like. If you can train yourself to be patient and work on one project and not get distracted by all the shiny objects, and by that I mean the new online course that promises to get you the success and money you want quicker than the project you've probably been working on for two years. If you can stay on that, if you can put your blinkers on, which is really difficult because you're bombarded with these things from day one. And it's the reason I've spent lots of money and time on online courses that have done nothing for me. Not because they didn't work, because I didn't work. Because I wasn't interested enough to do the work. Or I was too weak and I needed instant gratification. When you can stick in one lane and stick to doing one thing consistently over time to the best of your ability, that will work. Trying to do too many things just dilutes your energy and your passion and makes it harder for you. So for example, I'm working really hard to try and make a career and a business around this podcast. The podcast is also a YouTube channel. A podcast and a YouTube channel that may also help me make some money through other income streams like a book I've written. The one in the background that I forgot to put on the sofa. There it is. <laughs> a podcast and a YouTube channel that might also help me to make money from a book, an audio book, some affiliate marketing, some online courses. There will be a core business. So for in this case, the core business may be the podcast. And if I can stick in that lane for long enough and work hard enough, then there's a chance that it might be successful. That it might be successful to support me and my family and our dog which is ultimately the dream. I really hope you got something from this. I also work one-to-one -one with dads who are struggling or people who want some accountability. Right, that's enough shameless plugs. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care, bye. Dad Mind Matters, helping men safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Two podcasts every week on a Monday and a Thursday.